Hey folks, today I've got a quick video on Garmin announcing ECG functionality for four new watch series, or four existing watch series. The Garmin Epix Pro, the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro, the Garmin Tactics 7 AMOLED, uh, and the Garmin Venue 3. Uh, all those watches basically have the same new hardware sensor, optical hardware sensor, as well as hardware internally to enable ECG functionality. Garmin had previously announced it on the Garmin Venue 2 Plus this past January, uh, and that required FDA approval. And then over the last little while here, Garmin has been getting that FDA approval approval for these additional watches. Uh, so now these watches have it as well. There will be no other existing Garmin watches that will get this functionality unlocked because they lack the internal hardware to do that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you have, for example, a Phoenix 7 non-pro, sorry, it's not going to get it. The same goes true for a 400 965 or a 955 or any of those watches. They don't have the internal hardware to make this happen. Now, I'm going to quickly walk through how this works on your watch and your app. The core thing you need to know is you need to have both your Garmin Connect app updated as well as your watch updated. Additionally, you need to be in the United States, at least for now anyways. Uh, that's the portion, that's the piece, the area, if you will, that Garmin has uh, done the certification for. They have not done it outside of that. The good news, though, if you do travel to the U.S., you can unlock the functionality there and then go wherever the heck you want in the world and it still works. In fact, that's exactly what I did a couple weeks ago. I flew to New York City, I did the unlock process there, I went home to Amsterdam and it worked just fine. So to get started, it is super easy. What you can do is crack open the Garmin Connect app on your phone and go into the watch details and you'll see there's basically an option to continue setup as if you didn't finish it before. And now there's a new ECG option. The very first thing it's gonna do is to ask you to confirm your age and ensure that you're over 22 years old. That's a requirement of the FDA. And then after that, it's gonna go ahead and walk you through what an ECG ECG is and what it's detecting. Uh, in this case, it's detecting whether you have a normal sinus rhythm or an irregular sinus rhythm, basically an AFib type condition, uh, and it's not detecting a heart attack. I'm gonna repeat that many, many times. None of the smartwatches out there today are detecting heart attacks. They're merely looking for an AFib type condition. That is it, uh, so just keep that in mind. After it explains that to you, it's gonna have you do the very first reading. Uh, and the way this works, you take your opposite hand, your fingers, you put it on the bezel of the watch. After a couple seconds, it'll basically start to show your rhythm there, uh, the trace of your heart rate, uh, and basically it'll take 30 seconds to complete that. During that time period, it's gonna tell you that, again, it's not detecting a heart attack. It's super important to understand this. Uh, no matter what you're feeling, it's never gonna show you a heart attack uh, is in progress. It's only gonna be detecting and showing you uh, your heart rate rhythm. At the end of that period there, it'll show you the results for that. Uh, and you'll see them on the watch, whether you have a normal sinus rhythm or an AFib condition. Uh, and again, I'll remind you, it's not detecting a heart attack. And then down below, you can log any symptoms you had. All of that is then sent over to your phone, your smartphone in the Garmin Connect app, and you can actually look at the trace right there, as well as export it out as a PDF file to a doctor. The idea here being that if you have some sort of event where you're not feeling well uh, and you're concerned from a heart standpoint, you can do that ECG trace right then and there and capture that data because it may be transient, it may kind of disappear again. So you then take that data and say, hey doc, I've got a, I've, I was not feeling well, here's my symptoms, because again, you may have logged those right then and there, and they can look at that ECG trace and follow up and do doctor-like things. Uh, keep in mind, this is not doing passive uh, detection, any sort of passive AFib detection behind the scenes like some other watches are doing today. So Garmin today is purely a manual method of doing this as a one-off. Now, once you did that one first test as part of the setup, it's gonna say that your watch is now unlocked. At that point, you've got the ECG app on your watch effectively forever. No matter where you are in the world, it'll continue to work. And the reason for that is from an FDA standpoint, they consider that like self-care. So basically you've unlocked the functionality, you've checked off the boxes, who you are, uh, and then you're just traveling and doing self-care uh, like you would bringing medicines with you or something like that elsewhere in the world. Now, the good news here is for future watches, I would expect that Garmin will announce this as part of the watch's announcement. So if you had like a Phoenix 8 or a whatever the case is, Garmin 400 975, uh, then in that case, that'll basically be announced an announcement that it has the ECG functionality because they've got the FDA clearance for that. And remember, the FDA certification is tied to kind of like three things. Uh, number one, it's tied to the internal hardware sensor uh, on the watch. Number two, it's tied to the ECG app that's running on the watch. And number three, it's tied to the ECG app that's running on your phone. So that's the piece that's kind of certified and checking off certain bits there. And that's what Garmin had to effectively redo for their updated sensor design in the Phoenix 7 Pro compared to the existing one. The same is true for the Venue 3. When the Venue 3 launched, it lacked that capability for ECG because they hadn't completed that FDA process yet. And of course now it's complete. Likewise, you may still see some Garmin watches, lower end watches, that won't have this functionality. For example, we saw the Garmin Vivo Active 5 announced a few weeks after the Venue 3, just a couple weeks ago, uh, and that lacked the new optical heart rate sensor. I mentioned at the time that this watch will never get ECG functionality, and indeed, it's not part of the set because it lacks all the internals of that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Again, that's why historical watches aren't getting it, and that's why in the future, there may be some lower end watches that don't get it for some reason. But hopefully, hopefully that's not the case. After all, Fitbit's putting it in, like 
like $150 watches. So I think Garmin should be able to do it at $300 watches, but that's just my two cents. Anyways, if you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and whack the like button at the bottom there or subscribe. It really does help with the channel and uh, you're stay tuned for all the sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.